Hello. Uh, today I will tell you a little bit about the cosmological simulation database. This is quite a specific uh, database in our talk because uh, of the characteristics of the data. Uh, I came here from ICM and this work is actually collaboration between a couple of us. The, uh, Wojtek Helving is, is the leading uh, cosmologist who, who actually produced and is supervising work on this database. And the Wojtek Hury is, is my, uh, my developer. I'm basically, my background is also technical. I'm more programmer than a, a librarian and there will be a lot about uh, technical details. Also, it will be a little bit about the cosmology because my background is also in the physics. Okay, so, so this database is being developed as a part of the OCEAN project. It was mentioned before in the early session. You can see our new beautiful building which is going to be uh, done by the end of this year. And uh, what is important, this is the uh, scientific data analysis center. So uh, the, the name OCEAN, the O comes from open. So actually we are focused on uh, uh, providing an infrastructure for a large scale open data repositories. And this database is uh, one of uh, such, uh, such repositories. Uh, mm, so, so first to start is, is what, what, what is really cosmological simulation? Uh, this is a kind of very large scale simulation where we want to observe um, phenomena uh, which could lead to creation of galaxies, of stars, of, of dark matter. Uh, and we basically we have some knowledge of the, of the physics of the universe, but we still want to know whether it works really as we think, so whether we can build a model and it will behave the way we, we can observe it. Uh, this is a li really large scale simulation because we really don't know what, what is the setup, what is the starting point, and uh, we want to make a diverse, uh, mm, uh, diverse object to emerge and then compare them with our observations. And we try to make it uh, more and more detailed and bigger and bigger. And sometimes when I look at these uh, beautiful galaxies which really resemble our galaxy, I wonder maybe we are a part of somebody's simulation. Uh, basically, such kind of simulation is a very huge box with a very large number of particles. Then they, those particles move according to the gravity forces and they behave more like stars, uh, stars and galaxies. And afterwards we try to match the results with the observation. And uh, such databases already exist, uh, databases which present results of such simulations. Uh, most important are, are Millennium and Multidark uh, databases. Uh, they are quite, quite specific because usually we think of uh, the database of multiple research data sets. This is typically one, two data sets. I will tell in a moment why. And the users get a, a quite strange interface typically. This is directly a SQL interface. You type in SQL queries directly and there is a good reason for it. Um, and what is important um, is the audience. It's, it's quite small audience. It's about 200 people in the world who are doing this kind of cosmological analysis. Uh, those people uh, do share the work. This is this is quite different than than you know, uh, other uh, senses. It's because basically this is some kind of. It's considered to be a marginal problem. We do not expect to occur a new Big Bang in the next few years, so it's not easy to get funding for this problem. So when they run a huge simulation, they want to share results because they, they, they are not able to analyze it on themselves. And also getting resources to run more simulation is, is really hard. So, so basically all those, all those data is open and uh, everybody has a free access to those databases. Uh, 
Uh, and uh, this database, this COCOS, is built around the results of uh, COCOS simulation, the Copernicus Complexio. Uh, this is, uh, I, I don't think anybody knows Gadget because this is the software which is done to do the simulation. But about the scale is uh, two and a half million CPU hours. It's one simulation run. It goes for months on a big clusters. Uh, more details can be obtained from uh, from Wojtek, uh, and here is the uh, paper where all details are, or technical details are. So, so what's different? It's, it's really huge database with only two data sets actually. Uh, maybe it's not exactly right because there are a few smaller data sets, but what's important is that only two actually are important for users. But they are really large. The uh, raw data is 70 terabytes, but then they, they are analyzed, and the output of this analysis is, goes for another 30 terabytes. And uh, it's too much to analyze on a single PC. It's 25 biggest hard, hard drives you can uh, put into one PC. Of course, you can get some. Uh, uh, disk uh, matrix, but it's, it's not about this, it's usually the point is to, to give the whole resource in the one place and then allow people to get the results, the parts of the results online. Uh, in the post-processing of, of this, this huge uh, data, some objects are identify identified, those objects are galaxies, are black matter halos. Uh, and then those, all those objects are put into the database and uh, then the researchers obtain the data for the particular object and, and, and its neighborhood and then they put it on their own PC and they analyze it with their own software trying to find whether some types of particular space object occurred or no in simulation, whether there is enough of the, this kind of objects, etc. Mm. So, so what are the challenges where I'm talking about it? Well, it's not just, just another database. The first thing is a scale. Uh, it's 10 to 10th particles. Uh, this kind of, this number of data is, uh, uh, you know, we first started with attempts to visualize it. And it occurred that we couldn't put all the data within the Java array because the Java array is limited to the integer index. It means that the larger integer number in Java is too short to build an array of coordinates of particles from one frame. We have like 170 frames from the simulation. So, so basically, to, to work with data, uh, it's really hard. Mm. Then, during this post-processing, uh, millions of objects are identified, but they evolve, they, they collide, they separate. So, so uh, usually, researchers are, are interested about the object uh, uh, in the object history. This is important for them. Uh, and also, this is important that each Detail scale is important, both the, the very raw scale, what are properties of the area around the object, so whether it's in the kind of void or in a dense area, this kind of statistical grid property. The object properties itself, this is not simply a galaxy, its shape, its satellites, its uh, uh, etc. Mm, and the very detailed one, the, the, each particle's trajectory compound into the object, the thousands of particles uh, uh, combined together, they, they make object. And then the researcher wants to really examine uh, their properties more detailed, their statistical properties, their momentum, etc., etc. And this database must provide the queries for each kind of this data, and not only as a result, but also as a kind of condition. So, for example, I want to find all the galaxies of type blah, 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 in void, which had in history such kind of event. And it's big. <laughs> um, so what do we want to, to offer to the users? Uh, okay. <laughs> Perfect. 
the, the primary interface the users are used to SQL interface. I know this is kind of dirty hack, but as I said, we, we, had, we expect about 100 to 200 users. So we actually have to balance the effort in the user interface uh, with the audience. So, so not to build a, a over complex system with a hundreds of, of person months just for 400 of people who already do this this way with SQL and they are happy. We of course will put a nice query builder, uh, some um, natural queries built in, but actual power of such, such solution comes uh, in the fact that you really can uh, put complex query in and really put, because each this kind of this query is a comp complex research question. I look for a special type of object with a special history for some reason. Not, not just to find it exists, but to match it with our sky around it. Uh, we also must be able to fetch the, the, the trajectories themselves the, 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 each, for each particle, which of course they don't fit. You, you cannot build a SQL database with uh, the SQL database with 10 to 10 uh, records that they will have separate solution. And in the end, we uh, give an API for uh, which conforms this uh, virtual observatory standard. Uh, because uh, there are a lot of applications that already lets user just put this query into small window and get the data and analyze it on, the, on, the, on his or her desk. So this is uh, the kind of API users expect and use. So I, I have only a few minutes, so, and I, as I said, I'm a technical, so I must say a few words of technology. Uh, we do this as a Java application. Uh, and we had the problem with choosing the database because this is, this is usually too large uh, for the typical databases. But we think that Postgres database uh, on a proper hardware should be able to do this. The others done this on the MySQL or MSSQL database. And when it will happen, this is this work which is ongoing now, it will be available to the user to the users before the end of the Ocean project, so, so by the end of this year. And we hope that if you are interested, stay tuned. Okay, so maybe you've got some questions. Thank you. Uh, actually, we did, and that was our first choice. We, we considered uh, building this on top of Cassandra or MongoDB. Uh, but uh, finally, especially the users convinced us that they just know this technology. We would actually have to learn them all the new apparatus. And they are, they are astronomers, they actually don't know much. Uh, of course, they, they do operate computer every time, uh, every day, because most of the astronomy is done on computers nowadays. But they do really, they are not familiar with, with such kind of things, and we would have to offer them a new language for queries, and it was too hard for them. So, so actually we decided that we will struggle with Postgres to fit it, uh, to fit the data inside, to let them make the queries the way they can do this. So you try to hide or pick as well? Uh, so it's still a bit too complicated to them. Uh, it, it seemed to. So, so that was our choice. Okay. Thank you. So, thank you.